All right. Let's get into the word today. Is somebody excited to get into the word? Oh, it sounds a little lazy. Is somebody excited to get into the word? All right. All right. Now I'm ready. I got to say, you done did it. <laughs> so now it's hard for me to stop. <clears throat> Many times we talk about God and even the world around us is trying to teach us. And sometimes uh, the religion that we brought up in, we were brought up in tries to teach us. And some things that we get acclimated and we think that it is so common or it is the norm. Because we, do, we don't know better sometimes in some cases. Some cases we are just obstinate. We just don't care. We are going to do it anyway. That's, how, that's what our, uh, uh, our mentality is. And um, whenever we look at something uh, like, you know, when I came here, uh, to the U.S. and uh, started cooking some of my dishes, everybody uh, wanted to have a, a relation to it. Like they need to relate to it. Oh, this is like this. Oh, this is like this. You all, we always try to relate. Because, you know, we don't like the unknown. We do not appreciate the unknown. We always want to know. We always want to be in the known realm. We don't like the unknown, so we try to draw it down, bring it down to our realm, to our realm of understanding. Whatever that comes into that realm, we're good with it. When something is not coming into that realm, we just call it known, or we just call it mysterious. When we, could, when we do not understand certain things, or when we are not able to see through certain things, we just label it, okay, this is mysterious. And uh, uh, in through that, we just come to the conclusion, okay, it is something that nobody can track, nobody can trace, nobody can figure out. We just come to that place. Uh, um, many times, you know, as, as a guy who likes math, this is my, my thing. Many times people talk about randomness. Randomness is something when you talk about people, talk about any, to anybody, oh, it's random. When you say it's random, people just like, oh, randomness means um, it, it's happening somehow. There is no uh, 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 rule or rhyme to it. That's, that's, that's what we think about randomness. But in reality, randomness has a rule that you didn't figure out at. We did not figure it out at. But we just define it, okay, this is something we cannot define. So now, the reason I'm explaining all these things is, many a times... I see God being portrayed as a mysterious God. God of mystery. Have you ever heard these statements? Let's go to the slides. Keep going. God works in mysterious ways. Are you familiar with it? Yeah? All right, let's go on to the next one. You never know. I know one way or one time or other we used it, right? You never know. All right. Now the last one. This is my, this gets me so much. God needed them. If somebody in the family dies or if someone around us dies, we say, oh, God needed them. That's why they are there. God took them. The reason it hurts me so much is God doesn't need us in heaven before he needs us on this earth. He created us to be here. He created us to carry his glory, his mission on this earth. Why are you so hurried and worried about going to heaven? Yes, we have eternity to spend in heaven. God wants us to spend heaven on earth. Amen. He needs us here. It is here where we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to somebody. Not in heaven. In heaven, everybody knows Jesus. Amen. We have an opportunity to show how God is good to me here. There, you don't have any lack, right? You shall neither hunger nor thirst. That's heaven. There is no need. There is no requirement for Je I mean, uh, uh, to, to talk about Jesus because Jesus is present everywhere. 
Here we have an opportunity to show Jesus to others. To share the love of God. When the pe people around us are broken. When people are abused. When people are hurting. That's an opportunity where you can reach out to them. With the love of God. So that's an opportunity you and me have. Not only that. Here you have an opportunity to see more of God's glory. Amen. Of course even in heaven we will be growing. That's a different story. I'm not going there now. But here, what I want us to think of is, the life here is not for us to just get by. Many of us has the attitude, have this attitude, okay, I'm barely getting by. Oh, I'm hanging in there. This is something that gets me so much. Whenever somebody says, whenever I ask them, oh, how are you doing? I'm like, hanging in there. I always want to encourage them, why not you hang yourself? No, the reason, I, I might sound so harsh, but the truth is, God did, did not design for us to just hang in there. You know, he wants us to, he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. Amen. He wants to live as overcomers. He wants us to live as rulers and reigners. Amen. Kings and priests, that's our position. That God has given us. When the world around us is trying to defeat you. You yourself are defeating yourself. When you buy into the lies of the devil. You know who can stop us. Who can stop you. We sang the song beautifully. It was an amazing song. Who can stop our God. Who can stop. We declare it. But I want to tell you something. You can stop your God. It's you who can stop him. When we are not willing to allow him to work through us, allow him to work for us, we are stopping him. We are blocking him. And that's where God is being restricted. Today I'm trying to make an attempt to get the God of mystery that from that unknown realm into the known realm. God works in mysterious ways. Is it really true that God works in mysterious ways? Is it true that God is a mystery? You know why I hate mystery? I'll tell you something. Because is mystery leading us to believe that God is mythical? That's my, 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 my beef, if I have to say. Many of us, when, this, when we are talking about this unknown, uncertain God, when we talk and talk about him, what are we doing? We are trying to be, make us believe this God is a mythical figure. Aren't you seeing that in the society these days? More and more we see God is irrelevant. God is a man-made thing. Trust me, if, if, ever God, if ever man wants to make a God, he will never make a God. Nobody wants to abide by rules. Anybody here? We'll have a lead a life though there is no accountability. We cannot create a God. And day by day we are seeing a society where everybody is falling away from God. I believe God wants us to have an awakening right now for Him. A God consciousness have to increase in this land. How can we do that? It is our job as believers to move out of the mystery and get to know him. Amen. Does God really offer anything to know? Anything for us to know about him? Is God, is, is God trying to hide himself from us? Is God trying to lock himself? That is something I want to break it down today. So that we can see if God is really mysterious or is it somebody, somebody else? You might know the answers already. You might know everything about it. But bless God, sometimes we need to hear it over and over. So that our faith will become active. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. Oh, I know this story. Never say that, please. We are blocking God from working into our life. You may have read the David and Goliath story a thousand times. The thousand and one time, God is going to be teaching something else to you. Be always open to the word of God. Because he is bringing faith through his word. It has the power, it has the inherent power to get you out of your mess. 
So don't neglect the word of God when it comes to us. Even it might seem like it is familiar. Don't let familiarity stop you from going into the word of God. That's one of the reasons I always tell you, don't read the Bible as a storybook. It is not a storybook, it's a lifesaver. Every single day, you know, we have people that work in the medical industry. They always have to constantly upgrade themselves. Constantly update themselves. Because the knowledge is increasing every day. The medication they used 10 years ago, they cannot use it now. The policies and the, the, the things, the procedures they used to use 10 years ago, they cannot do it now. Everything is changing. And they have to uh, keep themselves up to date. Well, we do that very well when it comes to Facebook. We try to update ourselves. Grandma doesn't know the difference between many things, but she sure knows how to post a picture of her granddaughter. It is selective. We choose to progress selectively. When it is what you want to do, then you would do. And that's why I'm trying to encourage you. Let us, let us have this want to grow in the knowledge of God's will. Let us have this desire to grow in understanding God for us. Can if somebody says, I know God, that's a lie. We are always in the progress, in, the, in, the, in a place where we are growing from one place to another place, one height to different height. The word mystery simply means something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. It is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. That's, that's mystery. Now I want to read something to you today. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. There are a bunch of scriptures there today. Please, if you are writing down a note or anything like that, make sure have all those scriptures. Go back to all those scriptures when you have time if I don't get to them today. That will definitely help us get some things into light. First Corinthians in chapter. Starting at verse, verse 1. This is Paul talking to a group of believers in Corinth. And Corinthians is a very familiar uh, uh, a group of people because Corinthians are a group of people which, has, which have an influence of multiple faiths, multiple religions, multiple ideologies. There, are so much, there is so much of diverse influence on them. Aren't we the same? We have so much of diversity that is trying to influence us. Diversity is sometimes good, but diversity is not good sometimes. You have to remember that. Because when it comes to God, only one. You don't need diversity of God, amen? You only need one Savior, that is Jesus Christ. I am the way, not I am a way. We need to move away from that. A, it's not, a, it's not one among many, it is the one and only. Amen? So now... <clears throat> And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of spirit and of power. That's one thing you and me need to learn. Many a times we try to uh, uh, explain God to people. I would encourage you, instead of trying to explain God to people, let us walk in the power of God. Let us seek more of the power of God. Let us enter into the presence of God as today we were instructed. Let us have more of his power that it is overflowing through us. When you go through things, look at this thing. I, I don't know what you think of yourself, but I look at yourself as somebody like Peter. When Peter was just walking on the streets, people that were sick, they laid their sick child, sick children on, on his shadow. The people touched his shadow and they got healed. 
Isn't that an awesome demonstration of God's power? Is Peter special than you? No, he is not. If God has given that to Peter, he can give that to us too. But it is for us to hunger for it. It is for us to thirst for it. It is for us to desire for it. When we desire for it, God will definitely make sure he gives you that. While I was living in India, I seldom preach it to Hindus, but I, they always ask me to come pray for them. They always ask me to come pray for them because they saw the power of God working through me. And then I had the opportunity to tell them that Jesus is the only way. I have seen tons of people becoming Christians after them seeing the power of God in work. Not necessarily in big, big things. There were times this, this neighbor of mine, their house, they were not able to rent their house for a long time. But bless God, it came to my attention. They said, can you look into it? They gave me the keys. Oh, bless you. I got an opportunity. I took those keys and started praying and speaking blessing over that land, over that house, over and over. Within no time, all the house was packed. Amen. That's exactly what God can do. That's exactly what God's power can do. If you want to see a, a miracle right here in this place, pay attention. When we started here, how many shops were empty? And check them back now. Isn't that the power of God? And I'm trying to encourage you, wherever we go, believe in that. Believe in the power of God. You are a powerhouse. Can somebody be bold and say, I am a powerhouse? Really? It looks so passive. Come on now. Come on. One, two, three. I am a powerhouse. Awesome. Awesome. You are a powerhouse taking the power of God wherever you go. Whatever you are doing, things that did not work in the past will work because you are there. And that's the power you are carrying with you. And let that be the gospel. People would want to come and pray with you. Pray, uh, they would come and ask you to pray for them. Amen. I have seen one too many things to, to walk away from that. And that your faith uh, should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, pay attention, in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for, they, for, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So that's if I, I'm going to take a pause there. I have not seen, ear have not heard the things God has ordained for us. And that for me is mysterious, isn't it? That for me is a mystery. Many times I have seen many preachers preach to me. Saying, you will never know. You will never know. That is, that is an unknown area. You have, to, you have to just say, okay, I don't know. Yes, you need to accept the unknown. I, den I do not deny that part. There are times you always want to figure out, why God? Why did this happen to me? You know, I could be sitting in my back. I'm like, I'm preaching your gospel, Lord. I'm carrying your word even when it is hard and difficult. Why in the world I was in an accident? I could question him. But I dare not do that because it's a waste of time. I already know the devil is on my back all the time. He has a plan to steal, kill and destroy. Maybe this is an effect from that. Who cares? But I said, God, I know the devil have touched me. You promise double for trouble. And that's exactly what I do claim. I don't have, I don't serve a God of mystery. Amen.
I'm going to prove it to you just in a bit. For if you stop the words right there, the reading right there, it says, it sounds like God doesn't want you to know. It is, it is, you always come to the understanding. Many times I hear this thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We, we, if you talk to any teenager about something, they're like, I don't know. That's the simplest answer. They, they come up with great answers like, okay, I don't know. We did that too when we were teenagers. And my dad asked about something, I'm like, I don't know. That's the simple way out for me. I don't have to explain why I am doing what I am doing. Uh, I, and we have come to that, that place where we think, okay, I don't know. I don't know what God is doing. But bless God, that is not the God you and me serve. God is not a mythical figure out there living in some kind of a mysterious way or something that you cannot figure out. There are a group of people that struggle with it. Go with me to the book of Acts, 17th chapter. We're going to come back to this 1 Corinthians in a bit. Book of Acts, 17th chapter, starting from 22nd verse. Book of Acts, 17th chapter, 22nd verse. Now it says, then Paul stood in the midst of uh, Aeropagus and said, men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Paul saw this group of people. In Athens, Athens, however you want to call. That group of people, they are worshipping every god that is out there. You know, many times if you, if you go to India, you will see in any of these businesses, most of the people, you will see a picture of ton of Hindu gods and then there will be a Jesus Christ picture also. Let me throw him in their mix. The many, many times we might think, oh, that's so, that's so silly. But we do the same thing. Our job is a guard for us. Our health is a guard for us. Our body is a guard for us. It dictates terms. Our family is a guard for us. How can you say that? If anything is having more weight in your life than God, that's idol worship. Amen? It doesn't matter what it might be. Anything. I'm not saying go quit the jobs. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, where are you prioritizing your God? When we do not know, what are we doing? We are just giving God one among many. And we know when we have a trouble, we look at our bank account before we look at his provision. Don't we all sin there? We all fall short of it many times. Here the group of people are same like us. They threw this God, the God of unknown. And at least they have the common sense to understand at that time. Athens, the people in Rome, they, they, they were smartest people at that time. At least they had the common sense. There is so much that is unknown. So let me attribute that to, that to our God. At least they have that common sense. These days, what are we doing? We know so much, so we will eliminate God. What we know is nothing in comparison to what you don't know. That's our state of mind. That's our state of knowledge. We think we know it all. We think we figured it out. These days scientists come with something, try to fill some gaps and try to tell us there is no need for God for this creation to happen. And that's what our kids are being taught in schools. And that's what we are being bombarded every day around us. But bless God, I want you to know something. God is on the move. He is trying to show himself stronger than ever before. If you have ears to hear and eyes to see, open them up right now to see what God is doing. Maybe the people around us might be failing. But you are in Goshen where no evil can befall you because you have the Passover blood on you. And somebody shout glory for that. That is a glorious moment for us. The, 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 the spirit of death cannot come in because you are protected by the blood of the Lamb which is our Passover blood. 
And they threw a stamp there, okay, to the unknown God, I'm going to worship this unknown God. But Paul says, therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, the unknown God, him I proclaim to you. That means he knows this God, isn't it? The God these people didn't know is the God whom he knows. That's what the church job is. We are going with the world. The God is a mystery. That's what the world believes. Because they don't know this God. But you and me, you know this God. That's why you have the authority. You have the responsibility to proclaim this God wherever we go. Amen. Even through your life, when you are in trouble, you're not panicking. Why? Because you know God is in control. Everybody is giving up when they hear the bad news that you were diagnosed with cancer. But a believer would say, with God I will walk through this thing. That is what you have in you. And that is the glory of God you and me have. That is the known God. Don't buy into the lie that our God is mysterious. God works in mysterious way. No, he doesn't. If that was the case, Paul cannot say, I am going to proclaim about him. I'm going to talk about the guy whom you don't know. It is for them to not know. But for you, it is for you to know. Amen. Amen. He is trying to bring the unknown into known. Now I want to tell you something. Your mind doesn't know this unknown God. Let us renew that mind and bring him to the knowledge or the, to the known realm. That is why Paul declares and tells us that do not be conformed to this world. Romans 12 2. Do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by what? By renewing your mind. Your mind still doesn't know this God. Your heart is willing, your spirit is willing, but your mind doesn't know it. So that's why you need to make sure your mind is renewed. The more and more you build yourself with the word of God, the more and more you dwell with the word of God and in the presence of God, what are you doing? You're knowing. You're increasing in his knowledge. The more you increase your knowledge, the more you will be, that, you will be walking out of that unknown realm. As a Christian, you and me have the right to go there. Is it or not? Let's keep digging. Let's go back to that, that, that book of uh, uh, Corinthians again, the second chapter. The eye have not seen, the ear have not heard. Second Corinthians, first Corinthians, first, second chapter again. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God, 10th verse, I like that. Anytime I see a but, I rejoice it. Rejoice in it. I'm not talking about B-U-T-T. Please. Anytime I see a but in the Bible, he is canceling everything about. Now he is making a new statement. I'm coming for this new order, a new ordeal. What is that? But God has revealed them to us. Hallelujah. God has revealed them to us. That the things that I have not seen. The ear have not heard. Nor have entered into the heart of a man. Are now revealed to us. It's revealed to me. It is revealed to me. Like what? He says. Reveal them to us. Through. Through whom? Through his spirit. That's why we need. We. We. We need this so much, the fellowship of his spirit. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how smart you are, if you do not have the fellowship of his spirit, what happens is you are still stuck in human knowledge and then transform into the God's knowledge. That's where we, I see many people that are Bible scholars. But the thing, the problem they have is they are not connected to the Spirit of God. When we do not connect to the Spirit of God, what are we missing? We miss the revelation of God. Nobody can reveal Him to you. 
Nobody else can do that for you. Your intelligence, your education, your ideology, nothing can do that to you. But one and only, it is the spirit of the living God. And if God wanted to hide it from us, he would never give us his Holy Spirit. Didn't he give it to us? The day of Pentecost, he poured it on us. He said, take it. This is my promise. I'm giving it to you. Let him dwell in you. And now what is he doing? For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For man, what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man. Which is in him. Have you, ever, have you ever come across a situation. Where you said. Why are you putting words in my mouth. Did I say that. Did I mean that. No you said something. And somebody else interprets it differently. Because that is somebody else. Not you. That's the same struggle God has. You know people are trying to interpret God. Without God himself. That's the problem. We need to stop trying to figuring out this God without God. If you want more of this God, what do you need? You need to follow his spirit. The spirit of the living God who have come into our hearts. The day we said, Jesus, forgive my sins. He have come into us. He have been poured into us. What is his job? His job is to reveal it to us. There are several things that he does that is amazing and stunning. I would highly, highly, highly recommend. Read the book of John starting from 14th chapter through, through 17th chapter whenever you have an opportunity. You will understand what the mission of the Holy Spirit is. I'm going to show you a few scriptures today. A few. John 14, go with me to uh, John 14, 15, starting from 15th chapter verse. Gospel according to St. John 14th chapter. Fifteenth verse. The, the God is so simple. He tries to explain himself easily. But we make it complicated. Because we are trying to figuring it out, figuring him out by our standards. I'm gonna tell you some truth. Your standards stink. Let's be real. Our standards are what got us into mess. So instead of trying to go, go with him with our standards, let us go with him according to his standards. We have to move away from us. We need to go to him. Let him explain himself better. What is this scripture, God? I think this is what the scripture means. Who cares what you think? Let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. God, I ask for a revelation on this scripture. What does this mean to me? When you seek him like that, you are building your personal revelation of this Jesus. You are building your personal knowledge of this God Almighty. Instead of trying to struggle to figuring it out, you have the answers because the all-knowing God is dwelling in you. Amen. How am I going to walk through this month? How am I going to pay this bill? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I want to tell you. I want to encourage you with something. You know it because the one who knows everything is in you. He knows where the, where the fish is. He knows where the gold is. He knows where the healing is. He knows where the answer is. We don't have to figure it, figure it, figure it out. Because he already figured it out for us. He asked for us to follow him, not figure out him. Maybe it is time for us to stop figuring, figuring him out and follow him. It's, it's all he requires of us. Just follow him. Why are we struggling? We always tend to try to figure, figure, figure out. Okay, I think that's what God meant. I think that's what God is doing. I think, who cares? Can I set you free? Who cares? Let us look more for what God is saying. What God is showing. What God is revealing. And this is where men, mankind, we as his church, as the people who are to carry the presence of God. When we are struggling, when we are trying to figure it out, we are failing. 
And in through that, we are portraying Jesus as a failure. Aren't we doing that? When you, live, uh, live, when you are living with a powerhouse, you ought to be that, that example or you ought to be that person where people can see, oh look, this man's life is a mess, but he still enjoys it. Because that, what, is, what is the difference between him and me? My, my sister, I know, she goes through hell, but yet she is always happy and joyful because she knows this Jesus. Fifteenth verse, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. That's where you stand. Because it neither sees him, nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He's saying will be because the manifestation didn't happen at. But on the day of Pentecost it happened. So now he is in us. He's trying to reveal himself to us. He is not trying to hide himself from us. But he is trying to reveal himself to us. We are so much in struggle trying to figure this God why God? Why? Why is this? Why is that? But I think maybe we have to come to the conclusion that we're saying, it's not necessary for me to figure it out, but it is necessary for me to follow him. I'm going to follow you, God. I'm going to love you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to praise you in spite of what, is, what all is happening. In all things, give thanks to the Lord. Not for all things. I'm not going to give thanks to God because I, my car got wrecked. I'm going to give thanks for in that wreck. Thank you, Lord, for you are with me. Not because I got in a wreck. I don't give thanks to him because he doesn't have a plan to kill me. It is the devil's plan to steal, kill, and destroy. Not God's plan. He says, I have come that they might have and enjoy life. That's what Amplified Bible says. Enjoy life to the full till it overflows. Amen. We don't have to be mopey one more day. We don't have to be struck down one more day. We don't have to feel defeated one more day. Because Jesus is resurrected. Amen. We always need to look at that empty tomb and say to yourself. I don't have to dwell dead because I am resurrected. I don't have. Yeah, I'm not going to stop here. I'm coming out of this. It might look like hell. But I am walking through this hell and I'm coming out of this hell. We might see like we are missing everything. Everything is falling apart. But bless God in through that is coming God's glory. I am running after the glory of God. Not after my pain. Because my pain is turning into, into a testimony. The spirit of, he, he, he dwells with you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. He is telling. He is not going to leave you alone. You know, whenever we are going through things, don't struggle. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But bless God. Bless God. All knowing God is dwelling in me. I know what to do. I exactly know what to do. Because God is dwelling in me. God, Spirit of the Lord, reveal it to me. Make your voice clear. I want to hear that. I know you already have a way out for me. I know you have made a way for me. I want to follow you. If at that moment when you are feeling frustrated, if God is leading you to forgive somebody, adapt to it. Accept it. Be bold about it. Because in through that God is bringing a breakthrough. Something you don't know, he knows it. Something you cannot figure out, he already figured it out. Amen. Go with me. One more scripture. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. 
You ever have issues with memory? Take this scripture. And this is exactly what I used for my education. I will not forget anything I read. Holy Spirit, you are going to bring them to my remembrance. I'm not going to forget those things. And he sure did. He helped me when I worked, when I am struggling, when I struggle with my memory, when I struggle with the things that I cannot remember, I cannot, I cannot keep them on the front of my memory. He helped me. And not only that, he revealed his things to me. He revealed what Jesus Christ is into my life. When the word of God spoke into my life, at that moment I may not have the Bible in front of me, but he will bring those things into remembrance. You might be going through things right there. Right that moment you may not have an opportunity to pray. But he is willing to remind you. He is present in your life to tell you. Go to this. You don't need to slap that guy. Just need to forgive him. Don't we need that alert? Especially when we are driving. <laughs> One more scripture. John 16, 13. Oh, before I go, I want to read something from the Amplified Bible, the same verse. I want, to, I want you to know about the Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit. Bible calls him as comforter also. Amplified Bible explains him so much. And I, 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 I like it so much. The, but the comforter, the same 26th verse, but the comforter. What all the, the, the attributes of him? Counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by. That's what the word helper means. In the original Hebrew text, the word helper means all these things. He is your comforter. He is your counselor. He is your helper. He is your intercessor. He is your advocate. He is your strengthener. He is your standby. Anytime you think of Holy Spirit, don't just think of him as a fog, as a, as a mystery, or not even as a dove. I know many people have that picture. The Bible says, like a dove, never said a dove. Amen? The guy who saw it thought it would look like a dove. And now everybody attributes Holy Spirit, okay, dove. No, it ain't. The same way we picture these angels, cute babies, butt naked. No, that's not angels, please. Angels are so mighty. But anyway, I'm moving on. Again, I'm going to read this again. The helper, the, the helper means the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by. When the devil is trying to nag you, put you in guilt, you have this Holy Spirit who is your advocate. Hire him. Hire him to defend your case. Who is he to tell me that I am going to fail? Hire him. I have the Holy Spirit who is my advocate. And he, I want you to know something. He never failed a case. I'm going to hire somebody like that. No, all my friends are recommending an advocate now for me to go for my accident. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm still praying. But I know for sure I have an advocate. The Holy Spirit who never failed a case. When? Because he's the one who picked us up from the dirt. He knows our dirt very well. So let him, let him fight our case. Even when the, when the devil is trying to throw legality at you. Trying to tell you you don't deserve it because you went through this hell. Or you did this, you did that. All those kinds of things. Especially women of God, I'm trying to encourage you today. I know the devil is trying to throw guilt at you so much because you made some mistakes. You did something. Sometimes you attribute even the people's mistakes as your mistakes. Because most of the women I know, they try to keep peace. That's not your job. Can I be honest? That's not your job. That's God's job. And that's where we get overwhelmed, stressed out, burnt down. And that's where God is telling, cast it on me. Cast your cares on me, for I care for you. 
Amen. I'm moving on. And then then, then the other scripture, uh, 16 3. John 16 3. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. 13, yep. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Can somebody say all? It's not some, all. You want truth about your health? It is with him. You want truth about your finances? It is with him. You want truth about your marriage? It is with him. You want truth about anything? It is with him. All things... All, all into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak now look at this thing and he will tell you things to come he's not going to just explain to you now he is even get, telling you what is to come isn't that awesome you don't need to go sit with somebody who is going to read your palm and tell your fortune you don't need no fortune tellers or no crystal ball. But for you and me, we have it all in the Holy Spirit. He is the one who is going to reveal things to us. He is the one who is going to protect us. He is the one who called the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. In through that we can be always safe. In through that we can always be secure. And he is not trying to hide himself from us. Instead he is trying to reveal himself to us. There is no confidential matters with him. It might be confidential for the outsider, but for you, it is an open book. For you and me who believe in Jesus Christ, we are inside people. We are of the family. When you are of the family, you have it as your right. You know this God. He is revealing himself to us. Are you willing to know him better? Are you willing to spend time with him more? Are you willing to seek him more? Go with me. Last scripture, Proverbs. Read the remaining scriptures when you have time, please. Proverbs 25, 2. This is one of my, my fascinating scriptures. I like this scripture so much. 25, 2. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Are you a king? Are you a queen? Your job is to search it out. What God seemed like he concealed, he did not hide it from you. He put it there so that you can find it. Seek and you shall. Amen. Amen. That's what God needs you to be today. Can somebody say I am a seeker? If you seek, you will find. God needs somebody who can seek him. In the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of pain, in the midst of victory, in the midst of up and in the midst of down. No matter where you go through, no matter where you stand, you seek him and you will find him. That is what God has destined for us. That is his plan for us. He doesn't want to stay as a mysterious God. But he wants to stay as somebody. The God of Celeste. The God of Divina. God of Isaac. God of Jacob. God of Warren. God of Pops. God of you. He likes to be called so, isn't it? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's the God you and me serve. Let him be known as God of Stephanie, God of Sri, God of Matt, God of Fabian. Let him be known so. That is how God wants to reveal himself. The people in the world cannot identify God, but you and me have the opportunity to know him. Now that you know him, let it be revealed to others. Let the world see. Let the people see that this is the marvelous doing of the Lord. Amen. You are his marvelous doing. There is nobody else that can do or deal with you but him. You know that very well. I know it very well. I tell my wife, you can't deal me. You can't deal with me. 
But she tries. I only say one thing. Bless her heart. <laughs> but today I want us to think of this thing. Are we serving a God of mystery? Or are we serving a God who wants to reveal himself? The God whom you know. The God of unknown. Think of that. Where does God stand in our life? What kind of an understanding you have of this God? You, sometimes you and me may not know the details. But let's get the big picture. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. That means he's not going to leave you now either. You may not know how he's going to walk you through. But it's okay he's walking you through. Sometimes we may not know some things, but it's okay. We can walk through. We're going to sit there and enjoy the life because you trust in the Lord. You don't need to be worried about your life. How? How is this going to turn? How is this going to work? God is working for us. God is fighting for us. And not only is he fighting for us, he won for us. Amen? He did not get, he did not, he wasn't defeated. He won. He is victorious. And that's why he called us to be more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Because we know him. The book of Daniel declares, they that know the Lord shall carry out great exploits. Let us increase in his knowledge. Let us know him. Don't declare him as a mysterious God. Well, from now on, I might start penalizing you all. Anytime I see you guys saying, oh, I never know. <laughs> I might say, give me a buck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I want to read. See, check those statements again. God works in mysterious ways. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. It might be myster mysterious for a heathen. Not for you. It, it might be mysterious for somebody who is not walking in covenant with God, but not for you. For a Christian, anytime, I like to start that, that policing, Christian police. Anybody who starts saying those things, I'm like, oh, give me a buck. Right? We'll build, build a complex, not just a church. 